In the emptiness of space, a small probe floats further and further from the sun. It cannot alter its path, cannot reverse direction, and has no hope of ever returning home. It bears the weak pulse of human engineering, a gradual beat of radio waves over billions of miles. And now, after 42 years, that pulse bore a message no other has. NASA's Voyager 2 sent its first signal from outside the heliopause, from the region where the sun's power ceases and the galaxy starts. It's an achievement of exploration, not only in man's reach, but in our knowledge of what's outside the comfortable warmth of our star. Voyager 2 launched on August 20th, 1977, only 16 days ahead of its twin, Voyager 1. Its goal was ambitious, to exploit a once every 176 years alignment of the planets that occurs when a single spacecraft can slingshot from one outer planet to the next using their gravity to build up speed without expending fuel, the so-called Grand Tour. In the following 12 years, Voyager 2 was the first and only spacecraft to fly by all four outer planets, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. It discovered volcanic activity on Jupiter's moon Io, Saturn's ring system, the tilted magnetic field of Uranus, and Neptune's supersonic winds. Each flyby raised more questions and expanded the frontiers of planetary science. But Voyager 2's mission didn't stop at the planets. Following its flyby of Neptune in 1989, the spacecraft was put onto a course that would eventually propel it out of the solar system altogether. For decades, it has been coasting outward, its instruments taking soundings of the space around it in quiet silence. The sun does not just illuminate the solar system, it fills it with a stream of charged particles that never cease, so-called solar wind. The wind is pressed away in every direction and forms a huge bubble which is named the heliosphere. All within the bubble is the sun's domain, shielded from some extent by the strongest cosmic radiation. The edge at which the solar wind is ultimately halted by the interstellar medium is referred to as the heliopause. It is not demarcated by a signpost or an apparent wall, but by a sudden gradient in particle density, temperature, and magnetic fields. Crossing it involves exiting the sun's sheltered bubble and entering the unprocessed environment of interstellar space. For decades, scientists were curious about what the heliopause would be like. Would the solar wind dwindle gradually, or would it be abrupt change? Would the boundary be smooth or ragged and dynamic? In 2012, Voyager 1 first encountered the heliopause, but most of its instruments had ceased operating years before. Voyager 2, still equipped with a full set of operational sensors, would provide the human race with its best view yet of this frontier. Later in 2018, having traveled over 11 billion miles away from the Earth, Voyager 2 reached the outer boundary. Measurements started to alter in unmistakable terms. The spacecraft's cosmic ray detector picked up a sudden rise in high-energy particles from outside the solar system. Concurrently, its plasma instrument, which remained functional unlike Voyager 1's, saw a sudden spike in plasma density, a telltale indicator that the spacecraft had entered an environment not filled with solar wind but with the interstellar medium. Temperatures declined, particle velocities decreased, and magnetic field measurements changed in a manner that announced a completely different environment. The crossing wasn't smooth. It was sudden, as if Voyager 2 had moved from one room into another, through a doorway defined not by walls but by unseen powers. Voyager 2's measurements conveyed the heliopause as a dynamic boundary, more in the manner of the edge of an ocean rather than the border of a bubble. The sun's activity also increases and decreases in an 11-year cycle, expanding and contracting the heliosphere. As the sun is active, the solar wind blows outward further. During a quiet sun, the heliosphere contracts. So, the heliopause itself changes all the time, moving sometimes by billions of miles. 
Measurements of the magnetic field showed that the interstellar field is directed differently from the magnetic field of the sun, producing a twisting, reforming boundary. This encounter could affect how galactic cosmic rays, high-energy particles originating from distant supernovae and other cosmic explosions, find ways to penetrate the sun's defenses and invade the inner solar system. Among the most fascinating discoveries were low-frequency plasma waves. These bursts are considered to be echoes of intense interstellar shock waves, disturbances that likely took centuries to travel, possibly starting from ancient star explosions. Discovering them reveals how intertwined our little corner of the universe is with the rest of the galaxy. Even in the apparent vacuum beyond the sun's grasp, Voyager 2 discovered signs of the galaxy's continued tumult. The passage of the spacecraft through the heliosheath, the outer edge of the heliosphere, was brief. Years were predicted by models, but Voyager 2 traversed it within a few months. During the journey, it passed through areas of reversed solar wind flow, turbulent magnetic whirlpools, and structures that indicate the outer layers of the heliosphere are creased and irregular. It was as navigating through turbulent coastal waters, with eddying currents and eddying whirlpools. This turbulent region could be vital in determining the manner in which particles from interstellar space blend with solar wind material. Once beyond the heliopause, Voyager 2 entered a surprisingly quiet region in the way of radio emissions, an interstellar quiet zone of sorts. Scientists were anticipating more galactic plasma wave noise, but the readings indicated that the spacecraft had entered a rarefied, less turbulent area of space. Even in its quiet, this region is loaded with cosmic rays, streaming and unimpeded now that the sun's magnetic shield no longer stands in their way. Direct measurements of these particles yield rich information for understanding radiation dangers in deep space, data crucial for future manned missions beyond the moon and Mars. Voyager 2 has also illuminated the shape of the heliotail, the streamer wake left by the sun as it travels through the galaxy. Its readings indicate that the tail is twisted, curved, and charged with magnetic bubbles, akin to knots in a rope of the cosmos. These formations are relics of the sun's reign, reaching far beyond the planets. The Voyager 2 data disputes long-standing beliefs about space weather and the shielding properties of the sun. It reveals that the solar interstellar boundary is much more dynamic and intricate than thought. For next-generation interstellar probes, that implies readiness for stormy, layered transit instead of a slow fade-out. Knowledge of this regime is also important to understanding how variations in the heliosphere will impact planetary environments on timescales long compared to human lifetimes. Voyager 2 is not merely a scientific tool, it's also a time capsule. As its twin, it bears the golden record, a gold-plated copper record that holds sounds and images intended to represent the richness of life and culture on Earth. Salutations in 55 languages, the sounds of rain, wind, and animals, and music ranging from Bach to Chuck Berry are inscribed on it, waiting for any potential discoverer in the distant future. These records are not likely to be intercepted by any extraterrestrial civilization, but they are a message in a bottle from humanity, floating endlessly across the stars. Long after the human race is extinguished, Voyager 2 will continue on, carrying with it the tale of its creators. Voyager 2's energy supply is gradually depleting. NASA technicians have been powering off instruments sequentially to save power. Around the mid-2030s, the spacecraft will go quiet. But even at that time, it will still drift outward, circling the galaxy's center for billions of years. By the time that happens, the heliosphere itself will have moved and altered countless times. Stars will have been born and expired, and the sun's own life will be drawing to a close. But Voyager 2 will remain out there, a remnant of a culture that once gazed up and wondered what existed beyond the light of its star. Ultimately, Voyager 2's passage through the heliopause is not just a scientific milestone. It's a reminder that the solar system is not a solitary island, 
but a vessel sailing through a sea that's wide and fussy. The heliopause is not a wall fort, it's a living, dynamic border where the sun's winds converge with the currents of the galaxy. And out there, in that vast and silent distance, Voyager 2 keeps traveling, taking with it our queries, our wonder, and our dream that the unknown is ever worth grasping.